George explores the grain chain with support from farmers and millers across the UK. Hi there. Now, because my school project is on the grain chain, checking out farms and how they grow their crops is a really important part of the story. I already knew that the main cereal crops that farmers grow are wheat, barley and oats, but I didn't know how busy a farmer's year was. It all starts around the end of autumn. <laughs> around the time when we're enjoying Halloween and bonfire night, farmers will be out in the cold ploughing their fields and sowing the seeds. They'll also give them a good spray to help keep pesky weeds and bugs away. Once that's done, they'll just have to wait a wee while for the seeds to germinate and start to grow. But by spring, the crops will be well on the way and with a bit of luck, will be growing nice and strong, producing loads of shoots. The farmer wants to keep them nice. He will help the crops grow by treating them with fertiliser until... Ah, summer. Mm, that's better. By early summer, the cereal crops will have grown their ears. That's the bit where the grains are. The weather plays a big part in how successful the crop is. A bad summer can mean a poor crop, and in parts of the world, that can make the difference between food and no food. When it's ready, over the late summer, most likely when you're having a nice relax on your school summer holidays, the crops will be harvested using a combined harvester. As well as cutting the stalks, these huge machines will separate out the grain. These stalks are valuable to farmers. Once they're cut, the stalks will be baled and left to dry, which as well as providing a food for cows and horses, can also make a nice bed for animals. If it's even a teeny weeny bit damp, grain may rot, and that's the last thing the farmer wants. So the grain has to be dried and stored on the farm before being sent to the mill to be made into flour. Once the harvest is done, whilst it may sound like there would be time for our farmers to take a holiday, there's no chance. He or she will have to start the farming cycle all over again, ploughing and preparing the fields for the next crop. But before all that, they'll get a chance to take a breather and celebrate the harvest and try some of their produce at a local harvest festival. Phew, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Let's get back inside and get cooking. Here it is. Today I've made a tasty fruit loaf called Bara Breath, and it smells fantastic. There are stacks of different types of bread from all over the world, like chapatis and pita breads. But this one is from the UK, Wales in fact, where the Welsh dragons live. Let's get a slice. You have to cut Bara Breath in nice thick slices and there's nothing better to put on top than a big, thick layer of real butter. Fruit and bread together might sound a bit crazy, but it's delicious. See you soon. George explores the grain chain with support from farmers and millers across the UK.